Field from Peace Action, and I go to SUNY Albany. Hi, I'm Maven. I'm 21 years old, and I go to New York University. What does it mean to live in the nuclear age? Um, living in a nuclear age means that we live in a time when most of the world powers have the unilateral power to destroy the world, um, which in practice means that all of our international conflicts are just so much more high stakes and peace and cooperation are more important now than they've ever been before. What is your perspective on what the speakers contributed and what resonated with you? I like how all the speakers discuss the intersectionality of the issues. Like we had a speaker from the Black Lives Matter movement, another one from the climate movement. And I'd like to see how all those issues interconnect with the nuclear issue. How can we transform and galvanize young people in this field? Young people are very aware that nuclear weapons exist and are a threat, but um, we also are very comfortable with them and don't really understand that it's like a current actual threat. So I think we just need to honestly connect it to other things that are prevalent in the minds of youth, like climate change. Connecting climate change and denuclearization, I think, is a really effective way to mobilize the youth. After attending this forum, what are your next steps going to be? Mostly outreach and advocacy, sharing the information I've learned here with my colleagues at my university. Hi, I'm Kendall Charligan. I'm 21 years old and I go to Northeastern University. What does it mean to live in the nuclear age? Uh, for me, living in nuclear age means that you're a part of the military industrial complex that involves nuclear weapons, whether you want to or not. Um, that means like your taxes are funding the military, the jobs associated with it are, and also the environment that you live in is being affected by nuclear um, power and energy, whether you want it to or not. Um, learned about a lot of way, different ways that that affects people and how you might not know how it uh, affects your life on a daily basis. What is your perspective on what the speakers contributed and what resonated with you? Um, I think the part that really resonated for me was the gendered lens that they gave. Um, I thought it was really interesting how they brought in different aspects of like gender and race and how that complicates the issue of um, nuclear peace. How can we transform and galvanize young people in this field? The best way to activate young people is through issue linkage because so many youth are already really involved with issues they feel um, passionate about. So if you just show them how nuclear um, After this forum, what will your next steps be? I think my next steps after this forum would definitely be sharing my knowledge with others because I know so many other people who would join the movement if they knew more about it. Hi, I'm Chrissy Texador. I'm a senior at Boston University. Hi, I'm Melissa Chiquello. I'm a senior at Boston University and we're both a part of the Students for the United Nations and the Boston University International Welcome to the ICANN Paris Forum. What does it mean to live in the nuclear age? Well, for us, it's been 75 years since Hiroshima, and in all of our lives, there hasn't been a major destruction in nuclear bombs. Um, but at the same time, we're still building nuclear weapons. So it's definitely a terrifying feeling. Of what is your perspective on what the speakers contributed today, and what resonated with you? Um, what resonated for me was that you should really focus on your career passions and everything in the end will end up connecting to other subjects. So you shouldn't be overwhelmed by the things other people are doing and in the end your efforts will make a big difference. Right, and I think another thing um, with knowing so much about what's going on with like, climate change and how it affects with nuclear weapons or nuclear weapons affects climate change, I think it can be overwhelming and just it's important to celebrate small wins just as much as um, like big wins as well. And I think also common themes I found really interesting were um, just like the role of the media, how arts can create um, a bigger platform for representation and um, yeah, a bigger platform. How can we transform and galvanize young people in this field? Well, for us, um, our student organization, we work really hard to create an impact through conversations that we lead about the sustainable development goals um, and other important subjects. Um, right, I also think attending uh, panels or listening to speakers is also very influential and inspiring and it gets people thinking about other, um, not just career paths, but things that you can do to speak out and uh, let your voice be heard. After this forum, what will your next steps be? Well, I think that even though I've learned so much in this forum, there's still so much I realize I don't know. So I think for me, I would like to read up more about um, 
the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons would be my first step. And um, once we get back to BU, we're hoping to create a larger discussion on this topic from what we've learned. Um, I think it's really important that other students get involved on this topic um, and start talking about why it's important that we do. Hi, my name is Fatima Basuni, and I'm a student at Baruch, and I'm currently taking my master's in international affairs. So for me, what it means to live in a nuclear age is that we are at the age of a nuclear war. And what that means as we see um, the international relations between states arising and the tensions, if we um, look at um, the United States and North Korea, this is a very good example that really shows the tensions that are arising and that a nuclear war could arise at any moment. Um, for me, the discussions held were really useful and were really knowledgeable. Um, I mean, I have learned a lot, even though I have been um, involved in the issues of nuclear weapons and disarmament since 2018, and I really felt that I have learned a lot from these discussions. Um, the testimonies given by Susco at the very beginning opening ceremony um, really was touching to me, and I felt that I um, wanted to, to take an action at, um, at that time. And um, yeah, that's it. For me, it's very important to, to integrate youth in these discussions. Um, for me, I have been involved in these discussions since 2018 and um, learning a lot about these issues. It's a very complex issue that we need a lot of knowledge from people that have, um, whether it's survivors, whether people that are working in these issues, um, to really know what nuclear disarmament is. And um, these events held and these, um, um, these events held are really, really important for us to know and to have more knowledge about these issues. For me, I would take this knowledge and I would try to um, spread it to other youth so that nuclear disarmament would be an issue that all the youth out there are involved in. And I will continue to advocate for nuclear disarmament and um, TPNW to enter into force with ICANN attending uh, annual meetings at the United Nations and um, helping them reach their goal. Hi, my name is Ale Rizvi and I'm a junior at NYU and I interned for the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. To live in the nuclear age means to live in a period defined by tension that consumes the globe and within a minute's notice, one person on whim could launch a nuclear strike that could destroy everything we know. What is your perspective on what the speakers contributed at the forum? I really appreciated how the speakers touched on a multitude of different topics that weren't necessarily or on the surface related to disarmament, but all found a way to connect their individual issues like race issues or gender issues or uh, climate change to the greater issue of disarmament. How can we transform and galvanize young people in the field? I think to galvanize young activists, we need to do exactly what the speakers did. We need to connect the issue of disarmament to issues that people already find close and dear to them. And I think most students these days are already activists in some areas. People are passionate about everything, especially university students. So if you're able to connect the issues they care about to the issue of disarmament, galvanize them to become stronger activists. Now that you've attended this forum, what are your next steps going to be? My plan after this forum is to use all of the valuable information I learned at the conference regarding like tools on how to, how to be an activist, how to be an effective activist, and how to get people's attention, um, and apply these strategies to my university and my university's campus, and talk especially about the importance of youth activism. Hi, my name is Lovely Umayam. I'm the founder of Bomb Shelto, which is a creative production organization that brings artists, nuclear experts, uh, and activists together to talk about nuclear policy. What experience did you have that pushed you to start your project? So I think first and foremost, it's really important to know what already exists. So what exists in a nuclear 
queer policy space and the activist spaces so that way you could find your own creative voice. Um, from my experience in the policy spaces, there's a lot of really interesting and important historical and technical information, but they don't necessarily know how to translate it in a way that is more, um, you know, approachable for the public. And so for Bomb Shalto, that's become my creative voice is to do that act of translation. So I would encourage you all to really find where you fit. What can we do to galvanize youth into becoming more involved? I think it's really important to recognize that there are other issues out there that's competing for uh, attention that's really populating a lot of you know young people's like head spaces may it be climate change or gun control um, other injustices so I think it's really important that we think creatively about how we can create solidarity and coordination with those issues so that way nuclear weapons are not or, or the kind of activism we want to do um, that is against you know, nuclear weapons doesn't necessarily look like it's competing, but rather coexisting. What are some of your opinions on the Paris Forum that we're currently attending? I honestly think it's an incredibly refreshing environment. Again, coming from the policy space, I tend to to communicate um, and network with people who've been in the field for so long, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. And sometimes it's really easy to feel disillusioned and nothing new is happening. But my time here has been incredibly uh, refreshing in that way that I'm seeing new people, hearing new voices, and it's just a very different attitude. So one advice I would give is that especially when you're reaching out to artists or other policy experts is really to acknowledge and respect each other's strengths because you really need equal collaboration in order to make something amazing and beautiful. So find your voice and also acknowledge each other's voices uh, so that you can work effectively and collaboratively. Hi, my name is Christian Chavano of the IH Peace Foundation here in Paris. We just had a attended the Paris ICANN Forum. It was great, the students from New York and Boston. And this program was with Nuclear Age Peace Foundation, Trinity Awareness, Campaign, Nuclear Ban, US, and IGPNW. What do you think all the youth you brought to Paris took away from this conference? I think they were inspired and really motivated to take action towards nuclear disarmament and to really support the Treaty on the Prohibition of Nuclear Weapons and ICANN's work. What kind of steps do you recommend youth to take in order to advance this work? So I recommend that the students um, organize local activities at their universities, read about you know, what's happening in the field of nuclear disarmament and international relations and ICANN's work, reach out to activists, and try to engage with policymakers and with professors at their universities. How did you personally benefit from coming to this conference? So for me, I benefited from learning and listening to all the um, diverse views from various individuals on both nuclear disarmament, climate change, and other issues. Do you have any final thoughts or recommendations or advice for any young activists? So I really would like to encourage all the activists, especially the youth, to be involved with um, organizations and NGOs that specialize in um, youth mobilization and to really like just take action immediately to raise awareness about what's happening in the world concerning the weapons.